Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Gavin Lockyer from Aerofure Resources. How are you today, Gavin? Good, thanks, Tracy. It's always a pleasure. And Gavin, you've been doing a lot of traveling. I know you were in Singapore recently, and uh, you know I was looking at Dudley Kingsnorth's uh, uh, presentation. He talked about uh, the global rare earths industry being plagued by illegal production in China. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happened in Singapore and whether or not you deem this to be uh, uh, a real issue for Aerofura presently? Yeah, Dudley's, uh, Dudley's comments were certainly very interesting and I think uh, one of the statistics was that 40% of uh, NDPR was actually coming from the illegal trade. So uh, that's quite a, uh, a, quite a large and obviously significant figure. I think it's quite evident that China is obviously doing the best they can to, uh, to clean up the industry. Um, but I think more importantly, there probably needs to be a push from the customer side of things to ensure that the, um, you know, the, the chain of custody of, of, uh, of where production is coming from um, should perhaps be uh, coming into consideration. And I think that will certainly, combined with the Chinese uh, uh, clampdown on, on uh, illegal production, I think that will certainly uh, help the rare earth industry outside of, uh, outside of China and, and obviously a flow and effect to prices. Of course, you know, one of the impacts of this particular issue has to do with pricing. Did they talk about solutions? Well, I think the Chinese are trying to obviously uh, secure supply for their own um, domestic demand. And, and pricing certainly has been a major factor, more, for, more so from the supply side, where we're hearing that uh, many Chinese producers are actually slowing down or stopping production altogether at these prices. So I think this will force a more dramatic, more dramatic um, response maybe from the Chinese government in order to clamp down on that illegal mining even, even further. But I, I'd, I'd suspect that next year a lot of that resolves itself um, just through natural attrition, um, feedstock drying up uh, for those illegal plants. And as I said, if, if uh, external customers uh, start to demand uh, a bit more of a uh, chain of custody, then I think that will certainly uh, help to drive pricing in the right direction for us. Well, speaking of the right direction, your mineral resource update, can you give us an overview? I think what's, what was extremely pleasing about this mineral resource update was that we, it didn't cost us a cent in extra drilling. Uh, it, it came about as part of our environmental work whereby uh, we have to identify the waste rock that sits around the actual ore itself. Uh, and uh, obviously you, when you're mining uh, and uh, you're mining in a radioactive environment, you don't want to be putting radioactive uh, material uh, exposed at surface. So we, we needed to carefully block diagram uh, every part of the, of the resource area and our guys painstakingly went through a, uh, a number of computer programming uh, processes to, uh, to come up with a revised uh, waste model which inherently uh, has also given us uh, some significant upside in, in resource, so that's extremely pleasing. So l let me understand that correct. You were able to revise these numbers while you were working on your environmental impact statement, is that correct? Sure. Uh, when part of, part of obviously your environmental impact statement has to address radiation, uh, and the, the host rock around Nolans is, is radioactive, as everybody knows. And so when you're mining, you, you don't want to be putting the more radioactive material exposed at surface. You actually want that under benign material uh, to help with your um, radiation management processes. And, and so we had to do a significant uh, modelling analysis of, of the waste rock. And, and this has inherently led to an improved resource for us. And, and what is the timeline for the completion? For the EIS? We're yes. looking to submit uh, EIS with the authorities in the first quarter of next year. That then goes through a public consultation process uh, of about a month. Uh, any comments from public and or regulators will then have to be addressed by us uh, in a subsequent submission. So we would be looking for ultimate approvals uh, towards the, the end of next year or third quarter of the next year. Um, it's, uh, I should add though that uh, along uh, through this whole EIS process that we've been going through now for nearly 12 months, um, we've uh, engaged with the regulators, we've actually taken the regulators out to site 
uh, to see what we're up to, to show them the things that we're monitoring. Uh, and they've been extremely supportive and, and to date no major issues have been uh, identified, so that's very pleasing. Well, congratulations. And speaking of that, you just had uh, your AGM and I was powering through your PowerPoint and I thought it was interesting uh, as you were talking about your letter of intent with OCI company about your rare separation plant. Can you give us, uh, give those of us that were not present kind of an overview on the update that you provided? Of course. We've been looking for quite some time now for a, a potential location uh, for our offshore, uh, or sorry, our downstream rare earth oxide separation plant. Uh, the reason being is uh, obviously we need a lot of uh, hydrochloric acid predominantly to, uh, to strip the uh, rare earths into their individual oxides and uh, to transport hydrochloric acid to central Australia is, is not very cost effective. So we've been searching globally uh, over a number of years now and uh, we're very pleased that uh, we, we came across OCI in, in, in Seoul and uh, they have a significant chemical facility to the southwest of, of Seoul uh, where they produce uh, hydrochloric acid amongst other things and uh, they're extremely keen to uh, pursue the opportunity with us to uh, joint venture in a uh, rare earth separation plant located in Korea. So uh, at the moment it's a non-mining arrangement, we're working hard to sort of push forward with that to make it a lot more formal and binding and uh, we hope to uh, have, have some news on that fairly soon. Well, I'm sure the Investor Intel audience is hearing what outstanding operators that the Aerofura team is. And what I enjoyed reading was that you've, again, reduced operating and capital costs by 7 and 16 percent, respectfully. Uh, you've downsized your and uh, relocated your corporate offices. By the way, they look fantastic. And uh, can you give us a little bit more about this? Uh, you also talked about a, uh, a salary freeze since 2013. Yeah, I, I guess um, we're, we're not alone there. We're you know, very cost conscious and we've had to do more with less. Um, we've reduced our uh, corporate overhead in terms of headcount and or our, um, our, our office space has significantly reduced. Um, we have uh, $13 million in the bank and, and we're hanging on to that and trying to get the best bang for our buck. And so, uh, you know, we've had to look at ways that we can find efficiencies across the board. Uh, we've also, um, and, and you touched on the OPEX and the CAPEX, which was a great result again from our from our internal team, but um, more importantly I think this, this time round the, the numbers have been um, validated by an external engineering group in like a podium uh, and we've also brought in some experts around uh, dams and tailings which uh, have contributed significantly to that capital uh, reduction and uh, I, you know it's a good it's a good result um, and I think it's just something that we need to do in this uh, capital constrained environment and and we hope to to squeeze out a bit more still. So in addition to the questions I've asked you from your AGM I mean it was a very thorough PowerPoint you've been doing a lot of traveling is there anything else you'd like to highlight for investor intel uh, investors because I know uh, a lot of us have been watching you for the last couple of years and we're really cheering for you Gavin. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we're cheering as well. Um, look, it was a it was a good uh, shareholders meeting. Um, we had uh, a good number of shareholders, and and they were you know they've been long term and uh, and very loyal uh, shareholders with us. Uh, one of the things that uh, has uh, one of the the recent um, things that we can certainly start considering now that we're getting our capital costs down to you know around the billion dollar mark uh, is whether you know a billion dollars is a lot for any company to raise uh, and, uh, and being a small a junior explorer is, is no different for us or it's even harder for us uh, but it allows us now to consider maybe staging or um, a reduced throughput scenario for our production so what that means is if, if we can get the capital down to a, a realistic level uh, something that might be a, a little bit easier to fund uh, we're now starting to investigate whether we can actually stage our production uh, or look to produce, uh, to start off with a, a smaller size plant uh, that, uh, that, that is a lot more bankable in, in this current market. Uh, so we'll certainly start looking at that over the, over the next uh, three to six months. We think there's a lot of upside there. 
I think the other thing that really came out of our, our shareholders meeting, um, which may or may not have come across in some of the audio or the, or the um, public announcements, uh, was that our major shareholder, ECE, uh, and, and their nominee director, Mr. Mr. Ding, actually uh, said a few words, obviously in Chinese, but uh, the translation, and I'll give you the short version, was that they remain extremely supportive of Arafura. They believe that we're on the right track. Um, they've been helping us uh, with our Chinese optimization program. There's some upside, we believe, that may come out of that. Uh, some of the work up there has has been showing some good signs of maybe changing some reagents around that might actually uh, provide some further operating capital and just operational benefits. Um, and uh, you know they're extremely supportive and, and they're open for business in terms of uh, they understand that they may get diluted over time and they're willing to do that provided that uh, we have the right strategic partners alongside us and, and they're helping us to uh, work through that process. So I think that's uh, extremely encouraging to have your major shareholder give you that support in such a public forum. Well, thank you so much for the update, Gavin. As always, it's a pleasure to, it's a pleasure to hear from you. No problem. Good to speak to you. Thank you.